So let's talk sedimentary rocks. This is lecture one for chapter seven, sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks and sediments form at or near the Earth's surface. And as a result, 75% of land and virtually all the ocean basins are covered by a thin veneer of sedimentary rocks. However, that's only 5% of the Earth's outer 10 miles. We happen to see a lot of sediments and sedimentary rocks only because they form at or near the Earth's surface. The importance of sedimentary rocks include evidence for past environments. Many of the sedimentary rocks that we have are economically valuable, coal, oil, and other fossil fuels, uranium, iron, aluminum, manganese, phosphate, and we also have groundwater as a resource that is found most of the time in sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are produced as a result of mechanical and chemical weathering. Now sediments can be actual physical pieces like clay, silt, sand, but also in include soluble components. As these sediments are transported, they then subsequently get deposited and buried. As deposition continues, the sediments are lithified into a sedimentary rocks. We are going to look at three groups of sedimentary rocks. The first is detrital. Second, we will look at chemical sedimentary rocks. And third, organic sedimentary rocks. This figure is showing various areas where sediment accumulates. As an example, gravity in a landslide will move down particles to the bottom of the slope and deposit. In a river, soluble products due to chemical weathering can become dissolved. At the mouth of a glacier, Thick deposits of glacial till can be deposited. Wind can deposit solid particles. When material that has been deposited in the ocean, that would be dissolved material, it will precipitate when conditions are correct and can produce such features as coral reefs. The ocean is another sedimentary basin. Much sediment is deposited in the ocean. Another example would be dunes in a desert situation. The first group of rocks that I want to discuss are detrital sedimentary rocks. They form from the breakdown of pre-existing rocks. They are composed primarily of clay minerals, quartz, feldspars, and micas. We distinguish between the various detrital sedimentary rocks based on particle size. Examples of common detrital sedimentary rocks that we will look at include shale, sandstone, conglomerate, breccia, and siltstone as well, which is not listed here. Since detrital sedimentary rocks are classified, classified based on their particle size, here is a chart showing particle size. If the particle is less than 1 256th of a millimeter, it is clay size. 1 256 to 1 16th of a millimeter is considered silt size. Collectively, silt and clay are called mud. When this material, that is the silt and clay, turns into a sedimentary rock, it can be a shale, mudstone, or siltstone. The next particle size is 1 16th to 2 millimeters, and that's sand. 
when sand gets cemented together, it becomes what we call the sedimentary rock, a sandstone. Anything larger than two millimeters is considered gravel. And here they've actually broken gravel down into different sizes as well. When gravel is cemented together, we, it can become either a conglomerate or breccia, depending on the shape of the particle. Angular in the breccia, rounded with the conglomerate. Shale is usually dominated by clay-sized material, but often contains silt as well. Our interpretation of shale is the shale forms in a quiet, non-turbulent environment such as lakes, floodplains, and in the deep ocean basins. The sediments, as they are deposited, the clay, for instance, will be deposited in thin layers called laminae. Shale has a special feature called facility, which means that it can be split into thin layers. Shale is very soft and crumbles easily and tends to form gentle slopes. And shale is the most abundant sedimentary rock. Here the shale is showing this layered appearance. That's the facility it is exhibiting. In this case, the shale has a fossil fern that has been preserved in it, indicating a low oxygen, high organic environment where it was formed, such as a swamp. This figure is demonstrating the gentle slope that is produced by crumbly shale versus cliff-like feature for sandstones and limestones. If the detrital sedimentary rock is made up of sand-sized particles, we call it a sand side, a sandstone, I'm sorry. And sandstones form in a variety of environments. It's the second most abundant sedimentary rock. The most common mineral in a sandstone is quartz. When we look at a quartz sandstone, as the name indicates, it is primarily composed of quartz. Another variety of sandstone I'll talk about is an Arcos sandstone. These sandstones have 25% or more potassium feldspar and are often a pinkish color as a result. Finally, a gray wacky sandstone contains rock fragments and a matrix holding it together consisting of mud, primarily of clay and silt, in addition to the matrix, quartz is present. I just corrected this line here. It should have said, in addition to quartz, I omitted the and sandstone. That was incorrect. Close up of quartz sandstone, notice the glassy appearing grains. That is quartz sand. One of the features looked at in a sandstone are the sorting of the particles as well as the particle shape. Let's start with sorting. Get a highlighter. Sorting is defined as the degree of similarity in particle sizes. If we say a sand is well sorted, it means that the sand grains are all approximately the same size. Here is an example of a very well sorted sand, well sorted, poorly, and then very poorly sorted. In addition to sorting, we look at particle shape of sand. Is the grain rounded or angular? The importance of determining the shape of the particle is that it tells us how far that sand has been transported in its life. Well-rounded sediments indicate 
transportation of great distances, whereas angular sediments indicate wherever the sediment was eroded from, it was deposited nearby that source rock and did not travel a great distance. In this bottom diagram, we're going to look at the shape of the grains. In this first row, the grains are all what we call spherical, general spherical shape, versus the second row, which all grains are not spherical, or we can call it low sphericity. As far as roundness and angularity are concerned, both of these grains are angular, although this is spherical and this is not spherical. And as we progress from left to right, the grains become more and more rounded. So this sand grain is well-rounded and spherical, where this sand grain is well-rounded but non-spherical. Roundness and sphericity sound very similar, and it can be a little bit confusing. This picture shows former sand dunes that are now lithified into a sandstone. And this is an image you can uh, picture in your mind of what this sandstone used to look like. Our last detrital sedimentary rocks that we will discuss are conglomerates and breccia. These rocks are comprised of gravel sized particles. A conglomerate consists of gravel that is well rounded versus a breccia consists of gravel that is angular. Both rock types are usually poorly sorted, indicating a short transportation distance from wherever the material was eroded from. Image of a conglomerate, well-rounded gravel, cemented together, versus breccia, angular gravel, cemented together. Well, I want to stop here. Uh, this is a good breaking point or stopping point, and we will be looking at chemical sedimentary rocks in video two for chapter seven. So see you then.